Hi, welcome. I hope you can hear me and uh, you hopefully, hopefully you can also see me and uh, you can also see my free card screen here. Um, yeah, hi, welcome. This is uh, yeah a, a slightly different format than a usual stream because uh, I've used this uh, Twitch channel in the past to stream me gaming. Um, but yeah, I just figured it might be interesting to some of you to just live stream how I approach a design problem in FreeCAD. Um, I adopted FreeCAD uh, around September last year, uh, sorry, <laughs> second to last year, so uh, in 2020. <laughs> in September 2020, I came from uh, it, who must, it, it which must not be named, uh, so from Fusion 360, now I named it. Um, and um, yeah, I back then I spent something like a weekend going through a bunch of design challenges and that brought me up to speed quite fast. And uh, so that approach worked for me. And since then I've been using FreeCut exclusively for all, all that I need to design. And I usually design a bunch of functional parts throughout uh, the, the year. Um, and the problem that I have today that I want to solve here, and I hope I hope that we will get to a finish, but We'll, we'll see how far we come in the time allotted here is um, so I recently got my or recently it's already been a few months but I uh, recently got myself this thing here which is a CO2 monitor from TFA Dostman and um, I modded that thing so uh, it turned out that it has some very nifty uh, serial port here that I could connect an ESP8266 to, which is flashed with ESP Home, and which is reporting the CO2 stats from this thing to my Home Assistant installation. And all that works very well, and you see that I already have a custom printed backplate here, but the problem with this is that uh, you see that I already did a, a, an attempt at um, uh, at, at isolating that thing uh, because it, it caused quite a significant temperature rise within the case and th since this thing operates with infrared that caused the um, the, the reported values uh, from the sensor to go a bit nuts. So not nuts per se, they seem to be just a bit too low now uh, because the temperature in this thing is about three degrees higher than it was before. Um, and my goal here today is to design a new custom backplate for this, which puts this thing on the back basically, but still covered. So the idea is to just have a layer of, I don't know, something like a millimeter or so of material in between here uh, with the cables routed through. And that will then allow me to put this thing, mount this thing on the backside, put a cover over it as well. So it, I, I don't want it to show, but I also want it to, to not be in the same space as the sensor itself, because that seems to be causing problems. And I was asked which challenges or initial crossover guides I did follow with my initial free cut exercises. Well, I... Um, there is the, I think, Model Mania it is. It's, it's something that is actually associated with SolidWorks, but they put out, every year they put out uh, a two-tiered um, design challenge where you first have to design a simple piece and then you have to design or make the design a bit more complex. And I went through, I don't know how many of them during the course of the weekend and ran into some issues here and there with filleting most uh, uh, prominently because that is still a bit of uh, a tricky thing in FreeCut, um, which is why I did not um, achieve all of the challenges that I set out to do, but at least it caught me uh, got me up to speed with FreeCut. I also watched some um, some tutorials, uh, mostly Yoko's engineering. Hi Kunzi. And um, uh, back then, and also whatever else I came uh, uh, across on YouTube. Recently, I've also started watching a lot of uh, Flow is Corner stuff and all for visuals, I think the, the, the channel was, just to, to learn more advanced stuff. So I'm currently trying to wrap my head around, um, what was it called again? Something, something, link something. Anyhow, yeah. So I hope that answers the question. Um, so um, what we're going to do now is I first have to take some measurements because I have not done that yet either. And this is also why there is a camera up here. So you can actually see how I do that. 
and are not just looking at meat constantly looking down the next couple of minutes while I'm trying to make these measurements. Um, but I will also jot them down in a free card spreadsheet. So first of all, let me close this up again for now. can always open it up again if I need it. Also, by the way, currently 9.02 ppm. Uh, the door is closed. There's no window open. So that will rise over the course of this stream, I guess. Okay, so what I usually do first is, of course, I create a new document. And before I do anything else, I save it. And now you will see a ton of chaos here. And we're going to call that Dostman. Oh wait, TFA Dostman. Backblade. And now I have that. And I said that I want to measure a ton of stuff. So what I'm going to use here so that I can actually reuse the values that I will be measuring is the spreadsheet workbench. So let's first switch over here and create a new spreadsheet. And then open it. Uh, also, I totally forgot to mention that. What you're seeing here is not a vanilla free card. That is, uh, first of all, a link stage build. And you can find uh, the information about that in the lower left corner. So I put all, all the data about what I'm running here on a, down there. And there's also a link that you can go to uh, fuzo.net slash go slash free card setup where there are some more infos also on how I configured stuff and all that. Um, so... Uh, what did I want to say again? <laughs> I lost it, lost my train of thought. So anyhow, yeah, I'm going to use a spreadsheet um, because I really prefer to do my stuff parametric so that I just have one place where all the parameters are defined and that I can then reference in the modeling process instead of putting it on everything. Um, Oh, right. Yeah. So link stage, and this is vert UI, not modern UI, vert UI, but I modified it a bit um, because it was a bit too vert for my taste. Uh, so I, I moved a bunch of the stuff um, back, uh, a bunch of the of the tool uh, bars. So for example, in the sketcher, um, I wanted to have this over here because I know that I, I, I am not yet 100% proficient in the shortcuts here. Uh, that I used to to open this stuff. So I, I, there's still a lot of mouse movement involved for me. So I moved that here, but the constraints I have pretty much nailed down by now. So I moved them out of here. Um, but yeah, so vert UI, free cut link stage, slight modifications in the settings that I documented. Uh, so just go to uh, here, the, the link down here below. Um, so to foodle.net slash go slash free cut set up uh, that will lead you over to a GitHub gist and uh, there is everything in there, hopefully, that you will need. And also, by the way, which I will need whenever I need to redo this. So this is why I uh, did this as well. Okay, so um, measuring. Measuring means we need to see something, actually. So I have a set of digital calipers here, which I can only recommend, by the way. <laughs> And uh, the, the original backplate. So my current idea is to first model the original backplate and then build up on that and, and add holes as needed and may possibly some more padding and all that just to, to be able to fit that stuff later. But first of all, just get this basic shape done, the basic height done, these um, these grip thingies here, these, these clips um, and all of that, which by the way, designing this for 3D printing, I'll have to see how I best do that so they don't just break off the first time you try to use them. But it has not been a problem with the other back plate, so I'm not too worried here. If we just go for a good friction fit, that should hopefully be fine. Okay, so let's check this thing out. We have something like 33.8 millimeters here, so I'm going to create uh, how do I call that? Uh, oh, that's an interesting glitch that I um, I did not expect to happen. Okay, but regardless. Uh, yeah, okay. A apparently the virtue eye uh, uh, settings need some more tuning here, but we are not going to do this here and I'm just going to live with this. So plate, uh, let's call that the... What is this? Is this the width? Yeah, let's call it the width. 
and that is what did we say 33.8 right so 33.8 millimeters and i'm also going to give this an alias which is simply going to be the same as in the column right next to it which by the way is something that i really find a bit annoying about freecad that i can cannot just tell it to take this column as the alias for that one and that i have to do all of this um can i do this ah yeah so they are, they are just not large enough. Hi, Timon School. Yeah, there is a macro, but uh, I have to admit that mm, it doesn't really work that great either for me, at least in my workflow. So I've actually looked into how hard it is to create a, a, a different workbench that would work like the spreadsheet one, but just give me key value pairs because this is pretty much all that I need usually. I don't need pretty much excel in here i just need uh, key value pairs but to be honest so far it has been very very daunting and i have absolutely no idea where to even start but yeah so a param as wasra says a parameters workbench would be absolutely amazing but i'm currently at least not in the position to be able to do that because it just confuses me the heck out of me how to even start okay so now we need the length I called it height. I have to re readjust this and I need to be careful not to measure these little bumper thingies in here as well. Oh, come on. Whenever things get this long, it gets a bit tricky to do that. But this looks like 111, 112. Hmm. I'm not too happy with this. One hundred eleven point seven. That the hair. We'll go for one hundred eleven. I mean, half a millimeter is margin. Uh, or will we? Yeah. Let's do it this way. We also did it for the other one. And I said I wanted to rename this plate link. Blade length. Thank you, Timon School, for the sub. Um, then we have these little thingies here. Wait, can you? Yeah, these little thingies here. They have a depth and the length. So let's figure those out. I would say that's a good 10 millimeters. Ooh, how do we call them? Uh, That's not a clip, that's a... Oof. That's a key, because it keys into the into the case. So key, length. Ten millimeters. Ah, tap. Thank you. Tap length. Way better. Tap length. Ten millimeter. Yeah, by the way, a shortcut to set an alias. Hmm. Does anyone know? And uh, we also need the. Oh yeah. Uh, So that looks like one millimeter. That's the tap. Depth. Depth. Hi, Tim Tim. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since my last stream. There was a knee surgery in the middle and I frankly did not feel like streaming, gaming since, like game streaming since. Also have not have not have not gamed that or hmm, i have played a lot of games but most of them handheld on the couch so yeah <laughs> um okay and they are as far as i can see but let's confirm that better or rather confirm that they should be in the center of both sides it's 6, 61 
yeah, that looks okay. And yeah, they are in the center. Okay, and then we also have these clips here. Uh, wait, we also have a thickness. Let's make that do do that first, and that looks five point two five. What? <clears throat> so that is the plate thickness. Top does not want to do what I want to do. What did I say? Two point two five, right? Yeah, two point two five millimeters. Nah. I think I did not have this yet. Okay, and then we have these thingies and they have a position from this side of... Do you even see that? No, you don't. Sorry. It's a bit hard to keep in mind that you also need to see this. 26 point... It's a bit tricky to measure. But I say it's I'd say twenty six point wait, let's let's try that one because there is not not the, 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 the room for the buttons that are not populated isn't kept there. Twenty-seven. Oh, they don't seem to be symmetrical. Oh no, I can't just I just can't measure. Okay, so twenty-six point six here, twenty-six point six here, twenty-six point six here, and twenty-six point six here. That looks good. Uh clip distance is uh, 26.6 millimeters. And the clip width. Seven point nine six. We call it a round eight. Oh, thank you. 5.25, right. It was not two, it was, yeah. You are right, you are right. Thank you for the correction, Weasel. And thank you for the, the heads up. And oh, NTWK man. <laughs> uh, okay, and the height is. I hate having to measure stuff like that. Six. And then uh, we also need to know how far this needs to protrude. Do you see that, what I do here? No, you don't. Now you hopefully do. Ah. Dot 90, okay. Right, I could have used the depth pin for that measurement. You're right. Thank you, Tyeth. Tyeth? Tyeth? I hope that is pronounced correctly. Uh, uh, what clips? No, clip. Mm, clip. I'll just call it out. <laughs> uh, 0 0.9 millimeter. It's a bit of a weird name, but 
who cares? It's just for me and now you, because you also have to see it. I usually try to give them some sensible name, but I don't go over it as well. Uh, you know, there are, how, what, what, what was it again? There are, tr there are three hard problems in programming, uh, naming things and uh, off by one arrows. Um, and I think we also need the strength here, right? Oh, we also need the the wall strength here because we don't, I mean, there are things inside. We, we need to clear these so we cannot just make it what we want it to be, but have to stick to 1.9 millimeters. Plate, wall. Ah, it was that way. Thank you, Granders. Shit, what did I just measure? 1.9. 1.9 millimeters. A parameters workbench that also automatically sorts by name in the left side column. But yeah, okay. Um, will you zero already? Huh. Okay. Good, good. Um, and what did I say? We also need the... No, we don't really need the strength because that is simply the uh, out thing plus the plate wall. So that is enough. So that should allow us to at least model this thing up already. So that can go... Oh, wait. Ha! I forgot something. The radii. So there's two ways you can do that. One is trying to go like this with the caliper, but what I also do have is this thing, uh, which can help a ton here if it's one of these radii. So let's check that could be something like two point something. Uh, that's going to be a bit, that seems too small. 2.5 yeah you that should be one. two point five looks good two seven five that wiggles a bit too much so two point five yeah so can really recommend getting one of these and I completely forgot how they are called um uh, I think something like Radius Gorge or something. Try, try Radius Gorge or um, something like that. <laughs> um, I think that was how I got it. Radius Gorge. Look, it's, it, it, and so Radius Gorge, Caliper. Just to clarify that we don't uh, the, the 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 tooling here, and then so that we do not get any kind of issues. Radius gorge, where's well? Okay, thank you. Gorge, yeah. So, gorge, not gorge. Was my pronunciation that horrible? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so these are really helpful, and uh, they also come in various sizes. So I I have one here for uh ray for for one millimeter to six point five, and then there's also gauge. Ah, okay, thank you, gauge. And also for 7 to 14.5 millimeters, so that is quite helpful. Um, and yeah, so that is that, and we are going to start with modeling this thing here. We also, of course, will need to model the space for this. Um, and you know what we can actually, so, so I, I do not intend to make it completely drop in place or something, so I just need something that is a bit larger than this thing so uh we are going to measure the the size here that's 30 34.35 and we are going to go with oof, 37 i would say so that is the esp length Thirty-seven millimeters ESP length, and then the width. Oh, yeah, that was the wrong thing. I did not want to put the alias on that one, but 
that one. ESP link gauge, gauge, not gauge. Yeah, I've been saying this wrong my whole life. So here you go. Um, that's 25, almost 26. Let's add a bit to it. 29, does this fit here? You know what? Um, yeah, 29-ish. I mean, we can also just use the wall there. So we are going to use the wall there. And then it also has a depth or a height. And that is something like 7.4-ish. And we are going to give it a bit of room to a 7.8. ESP height. And yeah, that would be helpful if that was a variable that I could just reference in uh, in FreeCAD. But yeah. Hi, her brain. ESP height. Okay. Now I save. And that can go back there. We don't need the backplate and we also don't need the, by the way, that's a broken one, obviously, but it's the same. It's also an ESP. Uh, no, sorry, a, a Wemos D1 Mini, so. And I also do not know what is wrong, wrong with it, but it simply is, apparently it's fried or something. I don't know. I can't remember doing anything horrible to it, but who knows. I found it in the trash bin next to my desk and decided I'll simply measure that instead of trying to wriggle it out of there. Um, okay. Yeah, the keyboard is an Uppsala. It's a, it's an uh, UHK uh, ult Ultimate Hacking Keyboard version 1 though, but I have version 2 pre-ordered. Okay, part design workbench. We want to design a part and we want to call it backplate. Backplate, I can't type today apparently. Um, and then we need a sketch on the XY plane. And we start with a rectangle. And I'm currently thinking if we... Uh, her brain look in the lower left corner, there it says what I'm using exactly and where to find more info on that. Hi, Romses. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to do a master sketch first. Um, actually, let me rename that thing. And from that, I will derive the stuff that will actually be used for padding and all that. Um, so first of all, we are going to do a rectangle that is symmetric to this thing so that uh, it will always stay centered on the origin. And then we will dimension it. Uh, so first of all, a horizontal dimension, what the, that is unusual. What did I do just now that confused it so much? I just wanted a horizontal, okay. I don't know what I did, but it was apparently the wrong button that I clicked. Um, and we want, uh, I, by the way, just hit equals in order to enter the form uh, formula editor. And uh, I don't know about you, but for me, it was new that that worked. And I only learned this today. And I was pretty amazed because usually I had to click on everything. So, uh, and that is the plate. Oh, I think it was the width. Sounds correct. And this here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was the wrong button. There we go. Uh, this here is the... Uh, plate length. So far so good. And uh, what? It's no longer Shift H and Shift V. 
So, I mean, shift, shift H just works for that one. So, I don't know. Um, um, yeah, so um, there are two options now to go about the radius that is here on the corners. Uh, usually I... Oh, speaking about radius, we forgot the radius on the tab. Let me quickly measure that. You saw me measuring stuff enough now. You don't need to see this again. And I actually am going to measure that instead of trying to find that with the radius because I think it's too small for that. With the radius gauge. Could be one millimeter though. Let me check. Nah. Smaller. Oh, point eight. Jesus. <sighs> oh, thank you, Hamzas, and I will bring you hot sauce. Um. That was the top radius. Oh, by the way, we also forgot to enter the radius here that we measured on the on the plate. Wonderful. Uh, 0.8 millimeter. Yeah, Kunzi, I made hot sauce and um, from the peppers that I grew this summer. Well, and some store boards because my yield was not enough for the for the hot sauce recipe. And uh, Ronzes is getting one bottle. Of the, of, of the four bottles that were ever produced so far. Uh, what did we say? 2.5 millimeters for the, for the plate, right? Because I forgot to enter that here. 2.5 millimeters. I can't type today. Plate radius. Okay. Let's save that again. Okay, so... What I was saying is, first of all, we can either do this with that thing here, create a fillet between two lines, but the downside of that is that uh, it then loses the, uh, the, 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 the points which it currently uses for the uh, length constraints here. So that is a bit annoying. Um, the other option is to do it in the, with a fillet in the extruded version. And I'm currently a bit unsure what the best way is here. Uh, Romses, for you again, I'm designing a new backplate for the CO2 sensor to be able to mount the ESP that is currently uh, uh, pushing its sensor data in my in my home assistant and my, in my node red and all that um, to uh, to mount that on the outside basically but still covered so there will be a little a little nook for it to sit in um, and uh, uh, because the current one that I have uh, as we remember from our time at Congress is, is making it heat up, heat up, uh, heat up too much um, so uh, yeah, or, um, so what I said was either I use the, the radii tool in the sketch or I do it in the uh, in the extruded thing. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to go what Wasrel said because this is actually what I've been doing for a while now myself is I'm going to convert all of this in uh, construction geometry by clicking this button up here. Oh yeah, I need to work on this coloring. Uh, and then I'm going to design a new thingy here and give that a fillet here and a fillet here and a fillet here. Oh, I misclicked. And a fillet here. No! Oh, come on. Fillet here and a fillet here. Then I'm going to say that this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are um, equal. And I forgot the shortcut. 
E, that easy. And then I'm going to give one of them a, 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 a radius constraint, which I think was that one. And um, that was the plate, sorry, that was the spreadsheet plate radius. Okay, and then telling it that this thing here, that was wrong. What was the button, the, the, the shortcut for that again? Shift O. Ah. Yeah. The reason that I'm not doing this with the keyboard shortcut is that it, it's simply not something that works well with one hand and then have the other hand on the mouse. So, yeah. And now it's fully constrained, but has rounded corners. Hooray! Uh, and I know that I could also have done all of this in one step by uh, selecting all of them and then just entering the radius and then it asks if I want all of them to have the same and then I say yes, but I don't know, for some reason I find this more intuitive to do it that way. But yeah, no idea. Um, okay, so now we have that. Now we need these little tab thingies and these little tab thingies are pretty much just... Um, lines up there that um, wait so first of all construction geometry line tool so we have a line from there this is way over dimensioned now but um, and these points are symmetric to this line so I hit S oh it doesn't like something about this here. This is something that sometimes happens. What did it just... Eh. And this one is... That way. Okay. So that is now the way we want it. Uh, two boxes were necessary because, um, come to think of it, I could also have gone between these. No, I couldn't. Could I? I could also have gone between um, this and this point for the length and this and this point for the height. That's also an option instead of doing a constructed construction uh, rectangle around that and then pushing it on there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This is the way I do it. But let's actually try that with the top thing here. So um, we convert this back into regular geometry. And then we need to get closer because otherwise I will probably misclick again. This and this and this and this. Mm. See, I even misclick now. This and this. And now to show what was mentioned earlier, instead of now making this equal and then setting a radius, I can also just set a radius with Shift R. And then it says, do you want to share the same radius for selected elements? And I say yes. And then it gives me that thing and I can again go into spreadsheet. And that was the top radius yeah and then also we have a length here uh, shift h that is the tab length i think looks okay and we also have distance here vertical one uh, Tab, depth. And that looks about right, really. Okay. Hi, hi, hi. Um, now we have one. And now I actually will experiment with something that I rarely use, to be honest, because in theory, I think there is some way here to mirror stuff. Oh, quick save. Thank you. Good way. Uh, good idea.
Uh, because that, 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 that. Ah, that confuses me. Huh. Yeah, now I got it. That, that. I hold control, by the way, to select them. So. These shall be mirrored. Hopefully. If it doesn't work, I will just... Uh, uh, that is the... Oh god, is it the x, x or the y axis? I always get these confused. I think the x axis? Yeah, it is the x axis. And uh, why isn't it constrained? Or is it... Ah, oh, that's just that it is a mirror. Okay, cool. Um, and then we do the same thing on this end and mirror it across, the, across to the y axis. And that should, I think conclude the master sketch no we still also need the walls ah yeah okay so we also do this here on the uh, make it horizontal yes i know i could use a multi-line i don't know why i don't Tuck. then this and this is symmetrical to this. And it is unhappy with something again. Which one? It doesn't like it when this one exists as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then the same procedure as last time. First, the radius. We want this to be... Uh, spreadsheet, uh, booth, tab, radius, and then, oh, that is a bit in the way, and then, the, 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 that is uh, vertical distance of uh, spreadsheet, tab, length, And that is a horizontal distance of spreadsheet tab uh, depth. And then we ooh, have to select all of that. Nah, yes. And then mirror it on the y axis. There we have all our tabs. Okay, so. Also, sorry for the large font size. I usually run this on the other monitor, which is okay. And if I don't scale it up that much it becomes all a bit tough. okay um so we've done that and now we also do the same in here let me quickly check if this has an inner rate i mean it has an inner radius but frankly i'm tempted to just ignore this fact to make this a bit easier to design because in that case, it would be something as simple as doing this here. Um, wait, cancel, stop. We aren't there yet. We need to do this as, as well. Now we can do that. Um, distance to this point of um, plate wall, plate width, plate wall, there it is. And then also the same here. Okay. Oh, 
also I think I forgot something else. The wait. The wall height basically in in of the plate inside. Oops. There we go. No, there we don't go. Did it on the wrong cell again. There we go. Okay. And I think this is all that is what interests us here. I mean, in theory, we also need some holes in there for ventilation and all that, but that is something that I'll do later when I have figured out where to place the USP and all this. Uh, did I, by the way, oh, did I, by the way, the tab radius, clip out, clip height, clip, ah, yeah, I did measure the height. Okay, I wasn't sure. There is, in theory, an offset feature, but... Uh, due to wording work, why? For that I would have had to uh, basically model all of this again. I was hoping that I could use this because now I'm will... Oh, I see what you... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that now either. Okay, let's... let's um... huh. Can I? How do I get rid of this again? Apart from this. Hmm. Which I think just, yeah. Why doesn't control? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. Hi, Trevor Flowers. Good, mo uh, good evening from Frankfurt. Um, So just out of curiosity, if I convert this here in construction geometry, close this, will this, no, this would of course not pad because, uh, yeah, I figured, uh, you got it. Um, we're going to do another sketch also on the XY plane. Sometimes a bit tricky to, to grasp. And then we're going to copy. Huh. This, this, this. This. basically everything. I think at least that I need everything. I'm not 100% sure right now, but... And what we're now going to do is turn this, 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 and this into regular geometry. Do this. Oh, I forgot to copy that one. Turn. Uh, oh, God. Holy cow. No. 
desktop. Do the same with this. So I basically just copied everything now. Turning it into normal geometry. But only the parts that are extruding or not connected to intersected parts. It was, you will see why I'm doing this right in a minute. So the problem is that FreeCAD cannot patch this because it's multiple enclosed sketches. Or at least that is my understanding of the problem. So what I'm doing is I first of all create a master sketch and then I derive geometry from that. So that makes it a bit easier for me to just first paint everything the way or draw everything the way that I will need it later and then copy the parts that are needed and now but because the only thing that I now need to do is I now only need to add a new line between here and here and make sure they intersect and between this point and this point and then between this point and this point and also this point and this point and you get the idea here oh come on here that was one too many sometimes the constraints it creates in this case the the uh tangential one here uh, are a bit too much um and when it happens that something turns red after you clicked something somewhere it usually is a con that was the wrong one. It usually is a constraint that uh, slipped somewhere it wasn't supposed to go. Okay. Hey, is this all correct here? Yeah, that looks okay. Yeah. hope that was it looks good can pet perfect okay so um now we have a shape that we can actually pet and we will pet that up to Hmm. Yeah, to the whole to the whole plate thickness. I think. Yes, that's correct. So that looks almost correct, right? I mean if we convert uh, compare that, it doesn't look too wrong at least. Um, perfect. Nice. Okay. So next thing is we are going to look at this from the top again. And then I am going to currently trying to think on how, yeah, I want this to, to, to be on the bottom. So the, the outside on the bottom. Uh, that means we need to create a new datum plane. And on this datum plane, we need to create a new sketch. And then we will... Uh, I need to go back into the master sketch real quick because I forgot that I, for experimental reasons, I turned that into construction geometry. 
Uh, okay. And there. Because now we want... We don't want to see the date on Uh We want this, 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 and this. And we actually want that with... Um, real geometry. And now I'm going to pocket this. But not by that much, because that would make all of our thing go away again. But rather, uh, that was plate wall, I think. No, what was this? Plate wall height? Yeah, plate wall height sounds about right. Yeah, and this is now this part that looks about right. Okay, and now for the clips. Blah. <laughs> the clips are a bit ugly, I fear. Um, they are only on the long side, so here and here. My current approach for that would be that I uh, put a date on plane that basically goes like this through the middle of the clip. Um, draw the profile of the clip on the datum plane. Extrude, or rather pet the datum plane in symmetrical to, uh, uh, no, not the datum plane, sorry, the sketch on the datum plane. Uh, extrude, I'm, I'm saying extrude again, sorry, I'm pet the, 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 the sketch on the datum plane, uh, symmetrical to the datum plane by the width of the clip, um, which will give us a clip, and then mirror that feature on the X and Y. I hope that works. So if you don't uh, know, this is one of my more complex modeling thingies, actually. And uh, no, in uh, the problem is that in, in FreeCAD it is called pad. And when I say extrude, it's still my Fusion 360 past showing uh, through. Yeah, so I'm just not trying to confuse people by using extrude when I mean pad because it says pad on here and not extrude. I think there is also something that is called extrude, which is this here, extrusion, but this is something slightly different. So I have never used this before. I don't know what exactly it does, but I'm pretty sure that this is not what you want here. So I think also this might be a link stage thing. Ah, okay, so you could do, you know what? Let's save, click this and see what happens. Ah, okay. So this extrudes a line. Can I also extrude this face? So apparently this does what I would expect it to do, but I don't understand the difference yet between this and the pet. I always use the pet. I'm happy with the pet. Ah, so it creates hollow shapes. So if I do this, it will not be a solid, but it will be, um, wait, if I do this, oh, recompute failed. Yeah, okay, so it does, it just extrudes the lines that put the the face together, right? So it, it will not have a, a top layer, basically. When would I need that? I mean, there's probably some reason why I would need that, but right now I cannot think of anything. I also recently, for the first time, experimented with thickness, which sounded like the right thing that I wanted for a, a somewhat co complex bottom shape on um, on an on an insert for for this was this Rakko soldier thingy that you saw earlier, maybe in my files. Uh, but it turns out that it was too complex for it. Yeah, th thickness seems to be really, really, really buggy. So uh, I gave up on it and, and did differently. Thickness. Thickness lunatic straight talk. Um, ah, for cut... Ah, okay. Cutting planes. Good. Okay, yeah. So I, I will admit that I... I so far have not really modeled much that or ever really that was like together <laughs> where I would use a cutting plate. 
Um, which brings me back to what I actually, the, the little disclaimer that I wanted to give earlier. Um, I've been doing this for a bit over a year now with this tool. I am completely and utterly self-taught when it comes to cut in the first place, only by watching YouTube videos and reading stuff and all that. So if I do something that looks stupid here, by all means, correct me. Um, this is just the way that I do things and that work for me mostly. And sometimes they don't work and then I backtrack until uh, they start working again and try to find a different solution. So that is my pretty much... Uh, um, my, 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 pretty much my, my only approach to all of this because, yeah, this is not my job. This is just something that um, is part of my hobby. So, I mean, 3D printing used to be my hobby before I started on this whole Octoprint thing, and it is still a bit of a hobby. It just uh, has turned a bit of a... Uh, of It just has turned into its own, own monster, basically. Okay, so let's see if that works. Um, datum plane. Datum plane. That one, and we want it parallel to the. Uh, where is it? Yeah, to the YZ plane. To that one. But we want it offset. And now I have to think. I think that is for the from the plane's perspective. That is the Z direction. Just to make sure that I get this. Yeah, that is correct. And we want this offset. Um. By and now we need to do math. Um, so these clips have a distance from 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 this edge, but we need this plane at this distance plus half the width of the clip. So clip distance actually I stand corrected. We need the uh, spreadsheet dot plate length divided by two minus clip distance. Oh dear, wait. Okay, so um, we go there, then we go there, and then we subtract a bit more. Um, Spreadsheet uh, clip width dot, uh, not dot, dash uh, divided by two. Does this look correct? I mean, it does not look wrong. That, that is good at least, because it is slightly closer to the top than it is to the... Can you see that? I, I hope you can somehow see that. Um, can also protrude parts of a sketch by selecting the lines manually. Not better in your case, but good to know rather than use a master sketch. Ah, I'm I'm okay with using a master sketch ever since I finally understood how to turn the copy geometry into um into usable actual geometry. Okay, so I'm going to assume this is the right base now. It does look okay though. So. Okay, and now we need a new sketch. On this plane. Okay. And we are going to copy some geometry again. Because I do not want to calculate where I actually need to start here. So I'm going to, simply going to copy... Um, what am I going to copy? That line. It's just as good as everything else. And also that... Mm. No, that line. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to um, hide all of this stuff because it's only confusing. Okay. And now we need to put the clip. Self-contained, more or less, on this little thingy here. So it has... Hi, Gumiku. Uh, so it has roughly... Also, I hope 
if you are hearing the church bells, they are not too annoying. They certainly are annoying to me. Uh, something like this, and then it goes down, gets a little nose, and then it goes completely down until it meets here, and then we finally close the loop up. Okay, and now um, we need to dimension this. So this can't hear them. Be glad and NTWK man. These church bells are driving me absolutely insane as anyone who has been following me for a while knows. Um, clip height looks about right. I'm a poet and I don't know it. Okay. Also these here are no wait. I think I can do this. Oh wait, easier. Easier, way easier. Ah. They are simply yeah, autogonal. Right? Yes. So now we only have this here also has a size and this is um oops. Uh, no, no, yes. I forgot to measure something. Three millimeters. The clip has the nose height of the clip, basically. That is also uh, uh, something that we need here. Was this correct? I keep forgetting what I measure. That is not really helpful. Mm. 3.2. Nope, uh, her brain, because this is also a first for me. I usually try to avoid clips. What I'm going for here is that so if you look here at the wait uh if you look at this clip here it is very thin the injection molded stuff uh wait deeper and then like that okay so really thin walled and what i'm doing is i'm instead of just having one little thing here for stability i'm simply making it as thick as the wall here um in the hopes that this works. So fun fact, when I, uh, by the way, we are now at 1235 ppm here. When I um, printed this uh, backplate that I put out of, uh, found on Thingiverse and I think was de designed by Stefan Kern or Epic LPLER or something, um, I looked at these clips and figured this is never going to work. <laughs> But I figured I'm still going to try it and then we'll see. And it turns out that it actually did work. So, yeah, more or less, at least. I mean, they seem to wiggle a bit already. But frankly, I think the, 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 the strength from this thing here mostly comes from the push fit anyhow. So I'm not too worried about the clips, to be honest. If they break off then they break off. I do not really see how to um, how to to make them more stable given the circumstances here because I really do not want to print it like like this also with with this th side to the bottom because this is also going to be I just a support nightmare and uh, yeah I'd rather take my chances with uh, the grip, the clips breaking off and that thing completely relying on friction fit, which is, at least on this thing here, really good. I mean, I need, I need, uh, I need the, the shim to, to open it up. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, 1345 ppm. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, that still needs an Elias. Oh, and also you need to actually see what I'm doing again. Yeah. Uh, also, this year is really optimistic because this is a. I think I'm going to give this a slight chamfer later, but yeah. Uh, this here is what we just measured. This is a vertical height of. Um, clip out height and this is a clip hopefully at least it should be a clip with the narrow side to the bottom like a skyscraper yeah but then it's going to take ages and I mean honestly I could probably also leave the clips out <laughs> so I'm really not too worried about that here. Uh, okay, so now I want to see this again. Do I want to see this? No, I want to actually see that. For some reason it looks too big. Oh, I took the wrong... I took that one instead of this one. So we need to edit this sketch again. That's wrong. That's not going to work. Um, let me see. Instead, we want to. Instead, we want to go down here on this thing. And then, this. Oh, what's wrong now? What did I do? Um, yeah, we don't need that because we already said it is on a horizontal thingy. So, yeah. And then this has an, uh, a width of uh, spreadsheet um, plate wall. Yes. And this has a height or a length rather of oops. spreadsheet clip height. Yeah, that, that looks way better. Okay, and now we are going to pet that. Pet. Mm. Pet this. Uh, but symmetric to plane. And um, also with a length of clip width, I think. Eight millimeters sounds about right. Yes. So, we have a clip. Hooray! But it's only one, so we need more of these. So we want to... How do I do, just do that now? The best... Um, is this a linear pattern? This is a linear pattern. No, it's not a linear pattern. It's a simple mirror. Across this plane. XY? No, not XY. XC? XC. And then we are doing another one. Um, around uh, YZ. Hmm. I know that there is the... I'm thinking maybe the multi-transform is actually the better choice here because then we don't have to do this I don't know how often. Um, or can I just wait? Can I tell that to? Eh. Is 
Yes. Okay. Way better. Yeah, I, um, you know what, I'm actually going to show this to you now because, um, I've been, uh, working on these things here. Uh, let me actually show you just a regular one. So these are inserts for uh, one of these uh, assortment box thingies called uh, Rako Assorter. And um, they are parametric. The only problem is it takes a while <laughs> for it to calculate. And I actually wanted to, to see if I can do this in, um, uh, in, in cat query, because, uh, what I did here should translate fairly nicely to that. And maybe it is going to be faster. I don't know, but if I, uh, increase these two values to two instead of one unit each and let my poor little machine compute and compute and compute. Come on, you can do it. 33%. Um, then you have this. Uh, because uh, on the bottom of these, in, of these um, assortment boxes, you have this cross pattern stuff that uh, the, the original uh, inserts slot in. And I replicated that. So you have these cutouts on the bottom and then you have a thickness applied to the middle. So not thickness, thickness, because when I tried to do this with thickness, it is thickness, not thickness. It did not work. It did not work at all. It just crashed. So um, instead I did some really, really horrible thing that involves multiple multi transforms and Boolean operations in order to cut stuff from other stuff and all of that. and. This is also why it takes ages to recalculate, but um, it works. So I printed some of these already and they work nicely. And they also, um, um, wait, yeah, there's also the version with a little label holder here and which is now trying to display alongside with the other one, which is why everything was a bit weird just now. But um, so that works nicely. But yeah, multi-transform, really nice stuff because it can create a cutting plate plates like this that I can then use to cut off stuff from other stuff. And yeah, I also used a binder shape here and, and, and all that, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. But anyhow, so that is not really important right now. I just wanted to show it to you. No, I do not want to save anything that I just did there. Okay, so we now have this thing and it has clips um, and that is actually a good start. What I would normally do now, if this wasn't live streamed, is I would first of all print that, figure out if my tolerances are okay before I continue with anything else, because this is probably something that prints fairly fast. Let me actually check real quick. Uh, export. Oh, wait, I have to mark it up. Um, export. No, not an IMF STL, please. And, um, I'm waiting for Kira to load. Oh, already. 
Yeah, so something like this. And it would actually print fairly nicely. I mean, it does not have any holes in there, blah, but this is something that I would now usually print to figure out, does it even work? Um, but we're not going to do that today because I'm not going to sit here and uh, entertain you for 40 minutes while we're waiting for this print to complete. Uh, instead, we are going to continue with this thing. Um, so, the tricky thing now is, first of all, we need a bunch of ventilation holes. This is not a problem. That is something that we can just do with a, uh, yeah, with a with a linear pattern or something. Just make one and then extrude them or something like this. Uh, easy thing. What I do not want is. Uh, Wait, I can cannot see the preview right now because Cura is in front of OBS. That's better. Um, I do not want a mesh like this because I don't know. Frankly, I think the idea that the original author of the alternative backplate that I'm using here uh, had is with this with these little slots that are simply like going like this is is fine too, and way less work. And also prints way, way nicer than all of these tiny holes that all need some outline. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the other way. But what we now need to figure out is how to mount an ESP to that. So I actually have this idea of, um, which is completely and utterly over-engineered, of, um, uh, yeah, just basically ex extruding this further, uh, putting it here in a little compartment and then having a lid uh, for this compartment that screws in there um, with two M2 or M3 screws with the nuts glued in from the backside and just like in hex shaped holes. Um, that would be my approach here because I could also try to go with a friction fit, but my 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 general experience with friction fits is um, is uh, not the best with PLA in cases like that because it just flows a bit and then the fit is less good. Over yeah, exactly what what Gumiku just says. So I would actually opt for screws here. And to be honest, I would be also have been more happy if the backplate uh, got screwed into the Dostman instead of um, uh, instead of all of this friction fit nonsense here. But oh well, maybe I'll try to um, to try to add some screw mounts in there, but I have no idea how to do that. Super glue maybe and uh, and and hope. <laughs> um, I just got an idea. Yeah, standoffs could actually work. Just screwed into and not glued, glued, glued to the side, and then yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm starting to get really nutty idea here. So, uh, ideas here. So uh, the idea would be to just extrude this up further, uh, then add a pocket here uh, for the for the ESP, and then put ventilation holes in there, and then see how we go about the about the plate thing. Uh, Nimrod, this is a backplate that, uh, or rather this will become an alternative backplate. For now, we only have pretty much mirrored this design here for a CO2, wait, for a CO2 sensor, which is really unhappy, by the way, with the CO2 level in this, uh, in, in this office here. Um, because this one here has the problem that the ESP that I mounted to that thing here to make it network uh, capable um, uh, the ESP is inside the enclosure with the sensor. The sensor is heat sensitive, so the ESP is currently confusing the sensor slightly, and I want to have this better. So the idea is to put the sensor on the, not the sensor, the ESP on the outside, or outside, it will still be in a compartment, in a closed compartment, but there will be a physical separation plane between both. And, uh, yeah, so that is the idea. And uh, we just finished 
Ah, don't fall, please. We just finished with uh, pretty much replicating this, and now I will build up from that. At least that is the idea. Um, yeah, so first of all, I would probably just go with the... Uh, wait, a uh, little dumb. Yeah, that is the bottom, as we so nicely get informed about it here. Um, so I will just um, extrude the sketch that we have here into the other direction. Or rather, I will make a copy of that and then... No, do I need to make a copy of that? I think it will automatically make a, 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 bind, a shape, shape binder for that if I tell it to extrude some more, right? Yes? No? I don't know, but we are going to take it. So, um, first of all, this needs to go in the other direction, so it's negative. And then uh, it is the ESP height, because we need the space inside. So we want the ESP to sit directly on the back. Uh, and I'm using the, to the question by Gumiku, by, uh, when I'm constraining length, whether I'm using the distance or the horizontal or vertical length, I usually use the latter. I rarely go for the distance. Um, so the only thing that I have to remember now is two shortcuts instead of one from, from my fusion days, but it's fine. Okay, so ESP hide inside, and then we also want some kind of thing on top, right? I mean, we need a we need uh, we need a top uh, to to close this thing fully. So we are going to subtract further uh, the. Let's just take the wall thickness of the of the of the of the plate. So plate wall. It did not like that. Length too small? Ah, sorry. That was... Yeah, I have to do this instead and then do it again. Sorry. Um, I keep forgetting that I do not do it that way, but the other way around. Yeah, so, uh, so now it has done this, hopefully. Let's see if it actually does it. Yeah. Okay. And then we want to... Um, put the ESP somewhere. So we now put um, put a sketch on this plane, which is, by the way, something that is quite risky. Let's close this again. Uh, let's actually bind it to a datum plane that we can anchor on this because I have had really, really. It's it's gotten better. The whole topo, uh, topo, topological naming problem uh, has gotten a lot better, especially in the link stage branch, which is, also, which is also why I use it here. But sometimes when you reparameterize stuff or or things, then horrible things still happen. So I rather bind my sketches to datum planes because if this now ends up somewhere else, I can always just reorient it quickly and it shows up easier. And yeah. In theory, I could also define this datum plane instead of binding it to pad 002 phase 12 to be offset from the uh, XY plane by the height here, which um, always... You know what? Let's, let's actually do that for this one, just so uh, we've also gone through this approach once. Um, so I'm now anchoring it to the XY plane, and then I'm going to move it up in Z direction by the um, ESP height plus the I was following the chat and that <laughs> made me lose my brain of thoughts here. Um, uh, the, the something something wall plate wall and that was the wrong direction because it needs to go in uh, get here so we are going to do this um 
Uh, I used to try to do that as well while well, skipping the datum plane and offsetting my sketches directly, but I don't know. I just find found that utterly confusing. And to be honest, I also try to avoid having to play around with this stuff. Oh, wait, but you mean... Ah, wait, 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 wait. Do sketches have... Wait, first of all, we, de we define this and then we define the sketch. Ah, okay, that also works. Yeah. I, I somehow missed that I can do it here now. I remember having to do it in here in the properties and that was a bit of a an absolute utter drama. But um, if it works like this, well, perfect. Um, yeah, by the way, also, I usually don't go about naming this stuff unless it's important and just use the auto-generated names. I don't know how everyone else does this, but this is how I do it. Um... Actually, let's keep the pad or we keep the wait. I think if we go with the master sketches would actually might actually be the better idea. OK. Um, just so that we have a rough idea of where we are. We're going to go with a simple rectangle. That we um, first of all make sure is uh, symmetrical here to this thing. Oh, what did you do now? Oh, I was not edit. No, I was editing. Huh? You and you shall be symmetrical to this. What is the problem of that? Uh, apparently, this is one constraint too many. Okay, we'll just remove it. No problem. Okay, and then this uh, has height. It hates me. But we first get give it a height of uh, ESP. No, wait, we don't. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. We are doing this differently. Uh, we are actually going to copy the geometry of this here. And I'm simply going to use that. Oh, wait, we, don't, we only need one because it's symmetric. And build a little Zack. And then this gets a vertical, no, a horizontal, that is right. A horizontal length of I probably confused horizontal and vertical again, and this is what happened. This is not, this is an ESP A266, and actually it is uh, a Vimos D1 uh, Mini. Auto remove redundance, that one. Thank you. Oh, oh, I will as soon as it lets me. Um, spreadsheet ESP length. That one. Okay. Let's hope it does what it is supposed to do. Okay, and then we place it somewhere here. The question only is where. And I'm actually just going to. Say we put it 10 millimeter away from there because I have to do something and this is the something that I'm doing now. Okay. And then... Um... And I'm thinking about the the cover for this. And I think that actually has to go like something like this. So let's turn this into something like a secondary master sketch. And um, you go on there. And you are symmetrical to this then. And you are... Uh, I'll get myself a construction line here real quick.
that marks the midpoint because then I can do this and then I only have to define this distance here for it to be constrained. Uh, something something wall. And then it also needs something where we can put in the screws through the other side. So I'm thinking I'm thinking I need an M3 three bolt first because I need to measure it. Um oh wait, it is an M3 bolt. That is somewhat uh, trivial to figure out, but still I also need a nut. I need a nut. I need a nut. I'll... Mm, I can't reach depth yet. Um, dum -dum -dum. Do I have some M3 hardware here somewhere in my absolute and utter chaos? Uh, no, I don't. Does anyone know right now <laughs> how big the, the distance of a nut is for... Okay, no, never mind. I'll be right back. Because it's not like I don't have enough of these. Um, oh, by the way, that is the aforementioned assortment box with the printed inserts. Hooray! Including one two-tiered one. Yay. Uh, so that was what you saw earlier. And I need one of these, and that's about it. Mm. Okay. Thank you! <laughs> but I'm still going to 5 point... I'm not measuring 5.4. I'm measuring the same as Wazrel. <laughs> How are you measuring it, uh, Daniel? Are you sure you do not have an M4? No, it doesn't make sense. Or are you measuring it like this? It doesn't even... I can't even keep it like that. Yeah, but edge to edge? What edge? I'm confused. Like really the like that uh. God no, I'm going face to face that is way less of a hassle five point four and happy <clears throat> yeah, then we only need the five point four um. Uh, okay, so first of all, we need to... Oh, wait, and also we need a height. 2.37. Oh, you already had that as well. Thank you, Wasser. Yeah, I know that the whole of an M3 volt is probably 3 millimeter. That was my, my little brain blurb earlier that I forgot this briefly. Um, But yeah, so we are going to throw in two holes here. Or two, two uh, circles, one here, one here, both of them equal distanced from each other, both of them with a radius of, yes, actually 3.5. Ooh, that's big. Wait, not radius 3.5, diameter 3.5. That was my mistake here. And I think that was... Yes. 3.5, there we go. And I'm going to actually make this adjacent. 
and not adjacent tangential. Cam in the way! Sorry, I forgot that. Yeah. But, yeah. The chat is like here and the screen is over there, so yeah. Because obviously, uh, yeah, they, they got it. Um, okay, so we did that and now what we will do is we are also going to add an arc here that goes from there plop to there plop and also an arc that goes from there plop to there plop and then we are going to add lines that go from this arc to this and our word uh, sorry our horizontal ugh, like this and also like this and like this and then we're going to make sure that i think they already no they don't uh, that they are that they are tangential here and the same goes for this t yeah 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 and we do this here as well we do this here as well i said uh, I yeah 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 i accidentally selected too much stuff again You should be aware that I cannot click on any links right now. Um, and uh, we want this to be... Yeah, actually we want this and this to have the... Yes, we have the same radius and it needs to be Spreadsheet. Ah, Plötzchen. It simply needs to be 3.5 millimeters plus spreadsheet dot uh, wall thingy plate wall. Or do we want to go with? Teeny tiny screw. That fits nicely, okay. Yeah. Wait. It's a di diameter that is too small what I calculated there. It needs to be Yeah yeah yeah. Times two. That looks better. Okay. I think this actually looks okay now. Okay. Good. Then we want to see what we're doing again. Why is it up so far? What did I do with the datum plane? Apparently it was wrong. Because the datum plane is also way too up there. Oh. ESP height plus plate wall. That is actually correct. Then I did some mistake here in the extrusion. I did indeed. This needs to be a plus. There we go. Now it looks okay. The problem was that earlier I did the mistake of trying to do this by subtract, uh, subtracting. Then I got reminded that subtracting is a fusion approach. Here you simply say invert or revert. And I forgot to switch back the minus to a plus because minus x minus y, if I negate that, it is uh, 
x plus y, so um Hi data wizard. So now we have a new master sketch. That we're going to call master sketch ESP. Technically it's a master sketch ESP compartment, but let's not be too um hard here. Uh okay. We don't want to see the datum plane. We don't actually we do want to see the datum plane. We don't want to see the pad and we also don't want to see the other master sketch for now. And then we are going to um, create yet another sketch because now we are actually going to create the sketch that will do anything here or rather the multiple sketches that will do anything here. Um, to copy stuff again from the new master thing. So we want uh, this line. No, actually, first of all, first of all, we're going to start with this line, this line, this line, and this line. Turn all of them into real geometry. I really need to remember this shortcut. Ah, CM, control M, whatever. Um, close. And we pet that. Uh, sorry, we pocket that in the other direction, please. Thank you. And we do this by um, ESP height plus the wall. This is where this will go in. Then we make another sketch, also on the datum plane. And um, we yeah, um, that is what I was looking for. And then we are going to take this this, 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 and this, 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 and this. Okay, and then this, 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 and this are going... I said this are going to become normal geometry and then we only add this line here, this line here, that did not catch, you are There we go. And then we are going to pocket this, but I'm going to give this a slight uh, offset when pocketing because I will have to take the um, the whole situation with 3D printing into account here that this stuff might actually uh, um, yeah, need some margins to actually fit. So I'm going to give this a slight margin when I'm padding this, uh, when I'm pocketing this. I'm going to pocket this reversed by the uh, plate wall. But I'm also going to give it a fit tolerance of, let's say, five. Oh, uh, let me quickly check. I always forget which way that goes. Yeah, okay. So dot five. Okay. And now it's cut off slightly larger in the X and Y than we need. 
at least that is the idea. Okay, then God, that, that, that is going to be big. Oh well. Um, then yeah, fit tolerance. I only re I only learned about that when I did the when I did the the uh, the the inserts. I also learned about the draft angle when I did that because I could also have given this a slight draft angle now so that it doesn't go completely down but instead goes um, like at an angle of I don't know 20 degrees or something so that is really nice also I do not 100% like this here I'm I think before I really commit to printing this I will clean this up a bit and, and, and remove this part here but yeah um, actually Hmm. No, nah, not now, not now. <sighs> okay, and uh, then we also need to um, do yet another sketch on the datum plane. Everything is full of sketches. Another sketch on the datum plane. Um, and uh, because now we also need to copy the little, uh, not top, please not top, uh, the, the screw holds. So, ah, you, you and you, close, oh no, not close, we are both regular geometry now, pop, close. Uh, pocket, reverse, not by dimension, but through all, just throw everything away. Everything is now full of screw holes. And then it looks like this. There are holes on the back. Plop, plop. And what we also still need is some way to actually fiddle the cable through. So the, the wires from the sensor, because that is still missing. And come to think of it, I should probably just throw that into the master sketch as well. So I'm thinking I should probably just disorder them again from the sensor, uh, from the ESP side in the sensor, and then I do not have to actually fit a whole connector through. But let me quickly disconnect this. Uh, and open it up again. If I do this a bunch more times, then it's going to be interesting. Um, huh, we also did a mistake, I think. Wait. Yeah, these things are not supposed to go the whole way through. Ah oh, well, I'll correct that later. Um, for now it's more like that you see stuff in general and we do not have to be that specific. Okay, so I want to quickly see how much space we need for four wires here, but I think something like two millimeters or two five maybe. Yeah, two five. Totally fine. Completely enough. Great. No, it doesn't want to yet. Two five. Two five, two five, two five, two five, two five. Okay. Uh two five millimeters. And let's put it somewhere on the edge because I have all the wires going into the one pin side. Uh, suggestion, yes. A uh, corridor, but hmm.
Ah, yeah, but that makes the whole lid design way more complicated. <laughs> For now, we are going to go with a hole, but I think about that because I have to probably revisit this anyhow because I did some mistakes as I realized in the design. I usually go through several iterations. That looks really, really tiny compared to the... Yeah, that was... Uh, okay, yeah. I'm going to get this, I don't know. Five, four, three, two, three, three. Three. No, it's not difficult to model. It's just more than I was planning on modeling now. I also have not yet had dinner, so... Uh, and then we are going to edit this sketch where we did the screw holes and I'm simply going to add this as well. Because we did this through all. Is it highlighted now? Yes. And now there is space for it. So we can thread the wiring through there. The thing can live there. Everyone will be happy. Hooray, hooray. Um, and then, of course... Oh, right. I, I also need to put the hex thingies there on the other side. Um, <laughs> just realized I should actually also make sure that I have screws that are of the correct size. How high is this now? We extruded this first by um, by 5.25 and then we extruded it further 5.25 9.75 so it is uh, 14.95 so almost 15 um fifteen do I have fifteen? I think I have sixteen and I have fourteen. Yeah. Ugh that is annoying. In that case in that case, in that case, yeah, okay, new datum plane. Or no, actually, we are going to try this with the with the with the approach that Westra suggested. This is going to be so. I I want to put a plane base a, a, a sketch basically on this plane, but I due to the top on the top due to the TNP, I do not trust to just anchor it there. So um, we are going to do this instead. This was just a plane white, right? Plane, plate, plate, not plate, plate thickness, plate thickness. Yes, I did use open S card. Uh, that is actually what I started with. Um, I, I could make it work for me, but frankly, it was just so much pain to do something like a simple fillet. Um, so I uh, do not. Uh, actually miss it to be honest okay um then we are going that was wrong i wanted to do that because i want to copy these oh, wait not from there no 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 bad 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 uh from the master sketch here i want to copy um these two holes and we can so, and then I want to make, um, first of all, I want to switch to normal geometry. And then we are going to make an inscribed polygon with a center around here and something like this. And this and this here will be... Um, what did we say? Four point what? 
what was the size of a nut again an m3 nut 5.45 yeah, we'll make it um, 5.7 tolerances and all that. Um, I originally went with Open SCAD when I was starting out back in 2013. Then I briefly tried FreeCAD. It kept crashing on me. <laughs> that must have been around 15, 16. Then I got myself a hobbyist license for Fusion 360. Then I used this extensively until last year. Uh, until uh, I'm still saying last year, until 2020. And now I'm with FreeCAD. And I'm happy about that. It was a good decision. It still is a bit weird here and there, but Honestly, it is amazing what it can do, and um, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the occasional weird error here, down here, and and also the occasional com uh, complex, uh, com complicated shapes not doing what I expect, and having to think a bit about how I put my fillets so that they don't break and all that. It's fine, really. Um, and I did do the offset slightly wrong. Um, no, wait, that's wrong. I have to do that now, actually, here. Attachment offset. Hooray, I hate that <laughs> position. Right. Because I forgot that I also have to subtract the plate wall height from this, because otherwise it doesn't really attach there where it is supposed to attach. Okay. And actually... Ugh. Actually, I'm not done with the sketch yet. I need the same thing over there as well. I could mirror that, but frankly, I'm simply going to do it like that. You are, yes, you are vertical. And you, what did I say? 5.7? Yes. You are 5.7 millimeters across yes i'm scared of aligning sketches on faces i have had very 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 bad experience with that okay um this will now get pocketed and i have to think a bit of how fast fast um There is my nut. Uh, so the nut is 2.37. So at the minimum, at the minimum, we need that. But we already also established that I have bolts in 14 and in 16, and I would need 15 here. So we are going to give this four millimeters inset. Then this nut will sit nicely on the screw that I have, and I do not have to get 50 millimeters just so that it will fit here. At least that is the idea. Okay, um, dum 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 dum. What did I say? Four millimeters? Yes. In the other direction, I think. Yes. No, that was actually in the right direction. Crap. It's so the idea is I drop into uh, two nuts here and then I can screw the plate here in place which I by the way still have to actually extrude come to think of it the good thing about this here um, uh, link stage thing is I could in theory and now um, just extrude a second body here that Thing would do that but i'm actually going to create a new one um so second body and then i'm going to copy the parts of the master sketch here that i want uh 
Uh, first of all, I need um. Um, I'm not seeing what I'm working on. Now I see what I'm working on. And then we want this, 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 and this. And actually, we also want. Oh, that was wrong. But yeah, that is better. This, this. This and also this and this. You, 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 and you are regular geometry. And then we add four lines. Not four lions, but that would also be fun. There we go. Close. And then we managed to put this at the wrong place. Ah, yeah. Uh, attachment offset was the wrong direction. And that actually was supposed to go by uh, ESP height. Height? Height? Yes. Yeah, wrong direction is something that constantly happens for me with with uh, FreeCAD, but I mean, you, you immediately see it, so it's not that tricky to uh, to, to fix. Um, um, wait, it was ESP height plus the wall, right? Uh, in that case, actually, minus the wall. Yep, that looks better. And then we are going to pet that. It actually looks like it is going in the right direction for once. Um, and... Ooh. This is going to be the wall thickness, but with a teeny tiny smidge taken away. And that still needs holes. Uh, I forgot to include them in the sketch. No, not that direction I want here. I want to go here. And then we need the master sketch. Oh, we actually are seeing it. And then I'm going to copy geometry. This one. The, wait, this is too risky. I want to make sure I actually get the sketch and not the whole of the extruded, of sorry, of the padded thing. Um, I forgot to turn this into actual geometry again. So it will extrude. Okay. So this is the um, the lid, and and this is the back plate, and we actually need to display this again, right? So and this is the master sketch. Okay. So this is the very first prototype. My screws are not countersunk, they will simply sit on there, but honestly, I do like the the uh, the visual appeal of that. I actually enjoy seeing um, ESO, what is it? No, DIN 912, DIN 912, uh, Allen Keat. Um, screws just protruding from something like this. I, th I think it actually looks kind of neat. And I wish I could find one here right now. I had one earlier. Yeah, like these little things. No, you cannot see anything here. Um, 
So it will be something sized like that, um, only longer, but you will not see that. So this thing will protrude from the side. And it will be at the back where I don't see anything anyhow, so who cares? Um, thank you, JP Thiele. Um, so what I'm going to do here now is calling it quits because I have not yet had dinner. Uh, and I actually need to take care of that. But um, this is a very, very first version of what I wanted to achieve. And I'm actually surprisingly happy with it. Um, I mean, I did the mistake that these things here, these pads, they should not have extruded up here. And they also should not have extruded fully down here. But they all should stop here pretty much. So that needs to be fixed. Um, thank you. Uh, but uh, all in all, this is a good approximation, I think. And uh, I will probably go ahead and print the, the very limited first edition that we had first from here after I fix these problems here. And then we'll see. And um, then, yeah, uh, I'll not, I, I, I cannot tell you when I will do this next. Uh, but uh, if, yeah, if this was interesting to you all, I can see that I do another edition of this one. Maybe uh, fixing the design mistakes here, which will probably involve a lot of uh, changes that then might actually show people who have never heard about that what the topological naming problem is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I think in principle at least this should already work quite nicely. And yeah, I mean, what I would also usually do now, maybe I, I'm, I'll, st I'll st I'm still going to do that, just so you see it, uh, is that the final thing that I do is usually putting some fillets on everything. And usually it should suffice to just do that on edges that are selecting the edge face of well. Are from the uh, yeah from the active body. Yeah. It wasn't the active body. So the idea here is that so this year I think Opala. This year screams chamfer, in my humble opinion. So let's see what happens if we try that. And then this, this, this this, 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 and this gets a slight fillet. Yeah. See, this is what I meant with you have to be really careful uh, in what order you do what. Let's get rid of the chamfer again, just in case that was the problem. And then see if we can just fillet that. We can fillet this. Good. Can we also fill it that? So that seems, seems to be the problem. Probably because we have this weird thing going on here where we cut off a part of this. So that is probably the issue. So let's just for the sake of it try this. Yeah. And that would already make it look somewhat nicer than it did before. Plus, if I chamfer this, it will also be easier to put the lid in. Yeah. Yeah, I really need to clean this shape up. It's not happy with something here. Ah, oh, well. The noses need to go. Yeah. I mean, one option would be now to just. <laughs> Put, pretty much put a rectangle around it and cut the noses off. Uh, but uh, yeah, that does not necessarily need to be done. Also, do Gumiku, yes, there are still sharp corners. I do not fill it everything. But uh, yeah, that's just uh, first iteration, second iteration needs some more love. Uh, and also needs to needs a nose job basically or rather a tap job and then uh, we can we can see if it actually prints also come to think of it this year will be a bit of a tricky bit to print 
Oh, and we still need the, the ventilation holes here that are also still missing. So yeah, I think uh, this needs a second one to be finalized. But yeah, we are getting somewhere. I'm going to save this now. And then I'm going to do dinner and I wish all of you either a happy, uh, good, a nice evening or afternoon or morning or whatever time it is on your end of the planet. Um, and uh, yeah, just keep an eye on the on the Twitch channel and also on my Twitter because uh, when I do these next, uh, when when I do the next one of these or something, I will probably say in advance, way, way in advance, that I I'm doing something like that again. Uh, for the record, I already said that on Twitter, but I'm going to say this here here as well again. Um, I do not commit currently or cannot commit currently to a, to a regular schedule. Uh, I tried to do that in the past with gaming streams and that was just adding way too much stress on an already full and stressful plate. So yeah. And to Rom this, see you tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to finally try my knee out, my, 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 my operated on knee out again for bordering with him. So yeah. If you hear someone scream morning in the morning tomorrow, that might have been me, but yeah, no, I'm 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 confident that this will will, will work out fine. All right, okay, then see you later, alligator. Happy printing in case you have a three printer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, until then, bye bye.